uh, not surprisingly, the title of the, the plenary session today is So Sexy So Soon, uh, The New Sexualized Childhood. And we're going to have two speakers, uh, Diane Levin and then Jean uh, Kilbo Kilborn. Uh, Diane Levin, uh, we introduced last night briefly. She's a professor of education at this wonderful college, We Like uh, College. And she teaches at Summer Institute on Media Violence and Children and Service Learning. Uh, she has written eight books, including Remote Controlled Childhood, Combating Hazards of Media Culture, and The War Play Dilemma. So Sexy So Soon, The New Sexualized Childhood and How Parents Can Protect Their Children, written with Jean Kilborn, will be out in September. And she's a co-founder of CCFC and teaches resisting unhealthy children's entertainment. She'll speak first, and then she will be followed by Jean Kilborn, who I will introduce just before she speaks. Diane Levin. Come. Go right ahead. She follows Audrey's. Uh, right, uh, it's a hard act to follow. Thank you, Jean. Yes. So, more dealing with technology. It's a pleasure um, being here. It's a pleasure um, talking to you about the work that Jean and I have been doing for the last two plus years. And this is the first time we've talked about it together. So, we're, it seems very fitting that this is the place where we really start um, kind of bringing it out to the world and look forward to hearing what you have to say about it. As the Wheelock faculty person who helped bring the conference here, I also want to welcome you to Wheelock, the students who are here, as well as all the people who are coming back who were here last year and all the people who are new to Wheelock. I'm hoping, we're hoping that Jackie Jenkins Scott, the president of Wheelock, will be here later today to welcome you officially herself. But um, I did want to start the day um, welcoming you. So I wanted to start by asking you a question. What do you think when we say so sexy, so soon, we're going to be talking about? Is anyone willing to? And the acoustics are terrible here, so talk loud. What is so sexy, so soon? Has anyone seen it? What is it? MTV, OK, where there are images that are showing um, young adolescents in highly sexualized um, with highly sexualized behavior and images. What else? Brat dolls. Okay, we have brat dolls which surpassed Barbie in sales and Barbie dolls in sale in 06. Yes? Bras for seven-year-olds. What was that? For bras, for seven bras for seven-year-olds and younger. Okay, matching bra sets and thongs for children for young girls. Yes? Limited to and what's going on at, at stores. Yes? Okay, so it's the dances children are learning and the behaviors they're learning that are part of it starting at preschool age. And one of the things that is really important um, to realize is we hear lots of concerns about the sexual behavior of adolescents and even tweens now, and people act surprised and distressed. But what Jean and I are trying to do is show how it starts in the preschool very early years so that when, when we get to tweens, Children have been primed for years to get to the point where we're seeing behaviors that are actually harmful to them. Yes, okay, yes. Uh, lace up shorts for my two-year-olds. Okay, so two-year-olds and the way they look. This is a good list. I'm going to kind of then go over some of these issues, but I think we have a good start for realizing what we're going to be talking about. Um, just to realize it's an issue that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It began, in my opinion, in the mid '80s, when we were trying, when when um, television was deregulated during the years of the Reagan administration, when deregulation was very fashionable. Children's television was deregulated, and it was time to market toys and TV shows together. And the best-selling toys very quickly were linked to TV shows, and immediately gender divisions were used to market. The children. 
Girls were pretty, girls were sweet, girls stayed in the home. We had Care Bears and My Little Pony. Boys were tough and macho. And we are also talking about boys. When people think about sexualization, often they think about the sexualization of girls, but it's having a profound impact on boys as well. But with deregulation, there was, I call it the kind of revenge of, of the kind of was the backlash to the women's movement that I taught the first course in Boston um, called Sexism in Education, where we really looked at how sexism and gender divisions were, were kind of narrowing the paths of boys and girls and limiting their potential and what we could do to expand it. And since, ever since deregulation has happened, we've gone backwards and it's far worse now than when, I start, when the women's movement started in terms of the kinds of gender divisions we're seeing. But it's also a continual escalation. What happened last year isn't extreme enough. What needs to get more extreme, just even this figure that I have here, that every year more and more of what's on television is um, visible, is, is related to, to um, sexual content. And in part, you know, the old saying sex sells is true of media and advertisers. And, and violence for boys and sex for girls is, it kind of draws their attention. And we can, we're not going to go into now all the reasons why it does, but it, it draws their attention and becomes a, a real um, problem in terms of the lessons they're learning. Uh, but it becomes more and more a part of their view of the world and how it works. And what we're talking about is a lot more than child's play, which is what I started talking about in terms of deregulation in television. You know, someone mentioned Brad Stiles, but if you just read what's at the bottom of this, the kinds of language that's there, what, you know, for children ages six and up, um, what does it mean to be, you know, the dreamiest bikini around and the, you know, hip spring fashions and the kinds of things that it's telling girls when they get involved with um, Brad Stiles they're supposed to do. And furthermore, I have never heard of any, I've almost never heard of anyone describe anything girls do when they play with these dolls but dress up, focus on fashion and dress up in appearance, go on dates, have fashion shows, and go shopping. I've never, this was true in Belfast when I was there working with teachers. No one describes anywhere in the world anything different but this kind of play. And then there are kind of insidious things we need to think about. Here we have um, um, Tickle Me Elmo Barbie, and last year, uh, I mean last night, we heard, um, you know, um, Morgan Spurlock talk about other things about Sesame Street, but here, um, Barbie is worried. They're trying to figure out how to keep their market as Bratz is winning out. So you know the idea of the younger, the better, getting brand loyalty young. And Sesame Street has bought into it. Trusted Sesame Street, who we think of as kind of t doing all these good things for children. Here they are with their, with their Tickle Me Elmo Brad style trying to exploit um, you know, willing to work with Barbie and make money from it. Then there's the explosion in virtual websites for children um, so that you can go online for um, bebratch.com and get involved in shopping. And more and more, as more and more of children a secondhand experience and more and more of what boys are channeled into is violence and girls are channeled into sexiness and appearance. Um, it's, it means they're not having the direct real-world experience that would counteract those stereotypes as they spend four and a half hours a day on average with screen time, and that's a low estimate. Um, when we think about then all, all these, how much of their experience is secondhand, um, we really need to worry about this content. I, I envision their brain getting taken over more and more of it. In fact, I envision it as two boxes in children's head. There's the pop culture sexualized violence box that's telling them all kinds of messages that the people that care about children don't want them to learn. And then there's the box in their head that we're trying to, of all the things the people who care about children are trying to teach, and there's almost no connection between the boxes. 